Hi, I'm Marin Green from Indie Birth, and I'm so excited today to provide some commentary on a beautiful birth video of one of my clients recently that has gone viral on social media. This recording is to provide extra insight and teaching into birth and midwifery for our Indie Birth Midwifery School students mainly, and we're also sharing it with the world, with anybody out there, any birth nerd or person that wants to know more, this is for you. So it's always surprising to me when a birth video goes viral because we're privileged and honored to see these sorts of births all of the time, and they are all so beautiful and special. When a birth video goes viral, I always ask myself why. You'll see if you haven't already watched this video that in this one, it is because the energy of love and trust and confidence are so apparent in this birthing mama as well as her partner and her baby. But beyond that, it became clear to me that there is also a real opportunity for teaching about what is normal and how birth can look when we allow the unfolding to happen under a watchful eye. We live in a culture where birth is a medical event to be feared and managed. And just that simple fact alone, reading the comments on social media, uh, it's so amazing how these deep, deep indoctrinations and conditioning patterns, they do truly interfere with being able to actually see what's in front of us. And in this case, this beautiful birth video. First and foremost, so much gratitude for this mama, Kendra, and her beautiful partner, Xavier, and their gorgeous new son, Shiloh. So much gratitude from us here at Indie Birth. But I know from across the world, there were and are so many people that have watched this video, thousands and thousands and thousands, that were amazed and sent so many blessings and love and just true appreciation for being able to witness such a sacred, intimate event on the internet. So I want to further bless this family, not only with my own love, but with the love of the world, the consciousness that is changing the paradigm of birth, that this family now has an absolutely key part in. We just could not thank you enough. And the effect of a video like this of Shiloh's birth isn't just today. This will be for years and years to come and will influence, I know, so, so many women that see this and feel it so deeply in their hearts and their wombs that this is right, that this is what's missing. This is what is possible. And these are the women. Kendra is one of these women that are actively changing the paradigm of birth moving from this paradigm of fear and control and unnecessary medical intervention to one of love and trust. Just briefly, we're going to get to the video. I won't let too much time pass here, but because so many don't know me as well, I would love to introduce myself. As I said, I'm Marion Green. I am a midwife here at Indie Birth, and I have been a midwife actively practicing, actively attending home births for the last almost 15 years. I am a mama to 10 babies, all, uh, all of which I birthed myself, mostly at home. And I was trained as a midwife. So I didn't just start attending births. I didn't just happen upon this path. Um, when you view the video, this is a person that is skilled and experienced. I was licensed as a midwife many years ago. I also held the CPM or Certified Professional Midwife Credential, both of which I have returned to their origins. So I returned a midwifery license at one point to the state of Arizona many, many years ago and very recently returned my CPM or Certified Professional Midwife credential uh, to from where it came. And I feel very, very great and free about that. 
when I gave my license back 10 years ago, I embarked on this journey from a more medically trained midwife, as many of us are, to reinventing what I knew midwifery could be for myself as a woman, as a mother, and to the women I serve. As you'll see in the video, I've been untraining myself and I continue to do so. How I did this and how I am continually doing this is a lifelong process, but basically the births of my own 10 children and the hundreds of births I've attended as a midwife have taught me so much. My role as a midwife may not be the same as many other midwives, and that's okay. I am clear on my role. My role as a midwife is to protect the space and the rite of passage that birth is, while of course protecting the health and vitality of mom and baby. I seek to allow the woman's power of creating and birthing a baby without my ego or unnecessary interference, stepping in only when truly necessary and using every opportunity, as you'll see in this video, to allow the mama to own her healthy experience. In my view, a midwife should be trained and skilled and experienced, but not in an ego place of needing to rescue everyone or thinking everything's an emergency or holding to a routine that does not suit what she sees and feels in front of her. I allow the patience and watchfulness to unfold unless it's apparent that something else is needed. Part of my own soul mission here on earth, as well as through indie birth, is to redefine midwifery. So if you're curious about that, you can check out our other resources, our indie birth midwifery school. But for me, midwifery is so often more of a spiritual calling where I can utilize my skills and experience and intuition as it applies to the mama in front of me. So some details about this birth before we get started. This is Kendra's first baby, if you can believe that. And there's not a lot to say. She had an extremely healthy pregnancy, no complications at all, completely normal and beautiful in every way. Kendra did the deep work of self-investigation, uh, looking at herself in deeper ways, in all of the ways that we support as true midwives, so that birth is not just a physical event. It is also an emotional and spiritual awakening for so many the atmosphere of this birth, as you can feel, even through a video, even through social media, was completely peaceful. It was completely blessed and protected. And the emotion in the room was pure trust and love. I say that because when we're witnessing videos that can be confronting in some ways or trigger us, uh, it is very important to remember that we're not there when we're watching. And you can only take my word for it that there was no sense of urgency and that it all unfolded just perfect. Kendra's labor was not very long. In fact, her active labor was less than two hours, which as we get into it may account for some of the factors. And lastly, uh, the women that I work with that come to me, we are a resonant match. I do not work with any women, any woman or any family. These are women that want this deeper experience. They want to be held in support and knowing. They do not want someone to intervene or rescue them unless it is truly necessary. And they trust me as I trust them. This is not a relationship that everyone has the honor and privilege to be in. And I say that just as much as anyone. I have this honor and privilege of being in relationship with these families, and it is not standard midwifery practice. So again, you'd have to take my word for it that this deep relationship over the course of many months between our entire team, my two students that were there as well, um, was meaningful and also played a huge part into how this birth turned out. 
it is definitely a resonant match between myself and my clients, but also there is a huge amount of education. My clients are exposed to a 40 or 50 hour birth course that they have access to, everything from practical to spiritual to technical, and they also are exposed to many birth videos that look like this. I say that because we live in a culture where most people, no matter how educated they are, really haven't seen birth, much less normal, physiological, undisturbed birth. So I take it very seriously that my clients also have the opportunity to witness, even by video, what birth can look like, because that plays into their own subconscious and their own desires for this experience. So in this case, I will say that um, I met this couple at a free workshop where I was showing tons of videos. That's how we met very, very early in her pregnancy. And I do remember at that workshop showing a video of another mama-led resuscitation. And that one was much more serious. So at a very early stage in pregnancy, this couple had already been exposed to this idea that sometimes things happen at birth and that they would still be supported in handling that with my uh, direction and experience around them. So this was not a foreign idea, and it was one that obviously they were on board with, or we would not have been working together. All right, I think it's finally time for the video, and I'm going to just stop and start it kind of as I remember to and provide some feedback. So as we're starting the video here, obviously the baby's head is crowning. Again, this happened pretty fast. It had only been about 15 minutes since Kendra started pushing. And you can see she's in a position that she herself chose. Uh, we did have a water birth pool set up in the other room and that did not wind up to be what she wanted. So I support women in whatever position, wherever they want to be in their home. It is not up to me to call those shots for pretty much any reason. So we see baby Shiloh um, starting to come out here. And uh, already you can see lots of amniotic fluid being squeezed as his head is coming through and her beautiful husband, Xavier, uh, supporting her just intuitively. I am just sitting to the side, allowing it to happen. Uh -huh. This is really great progress for a first time mom, really quite fast. And you can see the baby is up, out, up to his uh, top lip. So his top lip is out and his bottom is not. Um, the baby is looking well. The color looks great. He's making little faces with his lips and we're waiting for the rest of the chin and then the shoulders. So just waiting patiently. There is absolutely nothing wrong at this point or at any point. This is normal physiological birth. The head is birthed and we wait for the baby to rotate internally. So there he goes. He gets his little, little lip out. His daddy has removed his shirt without my prompting, knowing how important skin to skin is. And he is ready to receive this babe. So we're waiting for the baby to rotate. There is nothing wrong. Yep, that's the baby moving. We're so excited that Shiloh is about to be here. We're all sharing our love and prayers for this special little guy. And Kendra is so calm, like she does not have a head hanging out of her. It's just wing on. Yeah, you can see she's right. helping him kind of release his <gasps> shoulder. That's right. And we respect the divine timing of this baby unless something else is needed. Oh. Yep, here you here go. it comes. Here you go, here you go. Almost, almost. Oh! Oh! Right. You got it. 
You got this. Oh. There he is grimacing. Oh my God. Okay, so briefly to address one very strange comment I read, and this was from another midwife, which really astonishes me. Uh, that was not a shoulder dystocia, folks. That was a normal baby being born with a head out and a shoulder that needed to rotate as they all need to do. So we do not need to get in there and rotate manually with our hands as the midwife. We do not need to deliver a baby for no reason. If the shoulder had been impacted, that would have been another story. But clearly, clearly that is not the case because this baby came out. There was no intervention needed. She didn't even change position. So there was nothing wrong. This baby was simply aligning himself. And I say that on the physical and spiritual plane, he was aligning himself to be born. No problem. Uh, now we'll see. He has cord around his neck. Okay. Um, also, no problem. Many babies are born this way. And obviously, this did not create a problem in her labor process. It was quite quick. And now the baby simply needs to be unwrapped. And you can see me hesitating only because I really don't like to touch babies if I don't have to. Um, but obviously, I wanted to help this guy out. I didn't want the baby to be dropped. And so um, I helped him unwind the cord before we could hand the baby through. Final comment. Uh, I've heard people say, you know, well, why didn't she get in another position or this or that? Because it's not my job to tell people what position to be in unless there's some sort of problem. And there was no problem. And she was progressing beautifully. And you can see how she was moving her hips. So intuitive. So I was just prepared to help this guy out. Uh, knowing that the baby would come out behind her and that we would just swoop him through. So again, just needing to unwrap the cord and um, get the baby through to her, which is a natural pause for most women. Most women don't pick up their babies right away anyway. And this idea of a baby being born and quick throwing the baby on her chest, we can move more slowly. There is no emergency here. This baby has just been born and there is nothing wrong. Underneath your legs. Okay. Through the legs. Through the legs. There you go. He's got cord around his neck, so. Hear him cough. Oh, okay. Look, he's coming through. And very gently. I want to make sure she's got the baby and she gracefully sits herself down. Now the baby's color is already changing. He's already getting more pink. He's moving his mouth. He's grimacing. He's attempting to exhale, which is what babies do when they're first born. They can't just inhale a breath as they change from fetal to newborn circulation. His tone is not fabulous, but I am watching for signs of progress and he is doing it. He is moving his mouth. Um, his color is improving. And they are providing stimulation. So again, pause for people that got all crazy about nothing being done. This is what nothing looks like when you don't heavy hand it. In a hospital setting, there would be vigorous rubbing with blankets and hats and stethoscopes. There's no need. This is stimulation. The best people to provide stimulation are the parents. Talking is stimulation. Rubbing is stimulation. Holding your baby is stimulation. So there is not nothing happening here. With a trained eye, you can see that this baby is improving and that I am being patient and that these parents are connecting. Their energy is connecting with this baby and calling him in. This is not a scary situation. This is what a normal transition can look like. His tone is not great still, but his color is improving. His heart rate as I'm palpating by the cord 
is about 140 beats per minute. So nothing weird has happened there. He is not compromised in that way. And of course, he is still receiving oxygen from the cord. So again, there is no rush. And in my mind, I'm assessing his progress. This is not a baby that is doing nothing. He is not making zero effort towards breathing. He is taking his time and making improvements. And he is well situated for us to be patient. So here we are at about a minute and 40 seconds after birth. He has not taken his first breath. Again, this is not unusual per se, especially with a very rapid birth. So what I was thinking as this is happening, again, is that he is making efforts, that stimulation is the first step when we think about resuscitating a newborn, and that there has been at this point, plenty of stimulation. So we need to move on. And I'm thinking, yes, this baby probably is going to need a couple of breaths, which his mama can give him. But first, we must remove the fluid from his airway. There is no point of putting air in if the airway is blocked. So first step, suction. And again, these are people that were acquainted with this idea, um, never would think that was gross. Uh, all kinds of comments out there about, you know, I'd never want to do that if I was the mom. Well, good for you. Um, but that was not this mom. And I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of her instinct and her intuition and the way she just so naturally knew what to do with some coaching. So I'm having her suction the baby's mouth first as per guidelines and then the nose. And this is the way we remove the fluid so that the baby can then take in oxygen. Um, I prefer this method because a bulb syringe is not only cold and um, harsh, but also can provoke a vagal response in a baby. So I would never make that my first go-to. If a mom was unable to provide suctioning, of course, uh, we would move to an actual tool, but it would never be my first choice. And I have no regrets about that in this situation or any situation I've ever been in like this. It provides the baby with an actual life force and what better life force than his mother. To me, this is one of the most beautiful things I have ever witnessed. Mouth and nose, spit. Here, he's clearer now and he's able to cry. So that was the issue. He had so much fluid from probably being born very quickly that it was simply a matter of clearing the airway. Uh, so again, he made his progress to a point where it was obvious to me he needed some kind of help, all the while being supplied with oxygen from the cord, no big deal. And he was allowed to transition into life in a very peaceful way loving way rather than fear. There would have been no use for fear in this situation. And I love again how connected Mama Kendra is to her mouth on his mouth. Still gurgly, but crying. And breathing. All the while supported by his dad, who's providing just natural stimulation. Yeah, I love how she 
knows that that is helpful. She can feel it. You can see it in her face. Uh, she just kind of keeps going with it because she can feel and see that this is helping him. And every time she sucks more out, he gets a little clearer, a little pinker, and he's breathing better. So um, why not? <laughs> You can see his tone is improving as well. He's kind of gripping her on the arm. And so it was not caught on video. Um, the last couple seconds of that but we did end up doing some postural drainage so i had her and helped her kind of hold the baby you know tummy side down sort of upside down with his head um, lower than his bottom and we cleared the last little bit but this baby did not require any breaths although that may have been helpful in hindsight um, but that is not what happened he was not given any breaths by his mom or anyone else uh, so technically I would not call this a resuscitation I would call this a slower transition with mother-led suctioning and stimulation um, and of course, you know, people were all concerned about APGARs. That's a whole other topic, really. But the APGAR score, if you recall, was developed by a doctor, Virginia APGAR, a long time ago. And it was in response to babies that were mainly under the effects of anesthesia. So newborns born to moms that had been on pain medication, it was an effort to make a rapid assessment of the newborn's condition. So yes, that is what I'm doing. I'm assessing color, tone, heart rate, all five things, but it's happening in a more fluid motion. And I'm not looking at uh, you know, exactly a point in time to intervene because I'm feeling what's in front of me. And again, for people that weren't at the birth, which was almost everybody on this planet, um, it was not a rush situation. It did not feel scary. It felt very much, very, very much like this baby was doing it. He obviously did. And that he was coming into his body. And I'm not going to go on and on about the the way or process or differences in which a soul might come into a body at birth. But to me, that is a very real thing. So if a baby is making zero effort, then we need to jump in and we need to get on resuscitating that baby. But this was so gentle and so perfect. And honestly, it didn't strike me as anything super out of the ordinary. It felt just like a very normal fluid birth to me. Um, and only again, maybe in hindsight of, of posting it and Kendra allowing this to be shared, have I realized just how deep the conditioning goes and just how much we need to reprogram women and people around normal. And not everything is a fearful situation and not everything needs to be, um, you know, remedied with massive intervention. We can make a difference with being with what's in front of us and coaching parents and empowering them to be in control uh, of their birth situation. So again, um, this was just a beautiful birth and a baby that came in so fast, he required a little bit extra time. So the final seconds here, uh, you'll see him looking amazing. You know, I'd say <clears throat> by five minutes after birth, um, he's just fully there, fully in, fully toned, all the things. And you can see her birth her placenta on her own. And me ask to put in the bowl. She's been coached and educated as to what it might feel like to have a placenta separated on her tailbone in her body. You can also see how great baby Shiloh looks. Now I'm giving her just some tea, nothing fancy, just some red raspberry leaf with sugar, with honey and salt to provide an electrolyte and a quick placental separation in birth. And she's feeling it. This is only a couple of minutes after birth, which is how it goes in an undisturbed birth most of the time. The hormone levels are so perfect and there has been really no interruption to her process. I'll be here with the bowl, but you're just going to push them. If you want to use your right, your right handed, right? Oh, it's good. Okay. Oh, there it is. Can I get it? Yes, okay. 
job. You made that look Thank so you. easy. Yeah, she All made right. that look we so easy. Officially done. So oh easy. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put the video back and maybe show it one more time uh, for good measure. Um, and maybe as it's playing, I'm going to ramble just a little bit about how this birth could have looked in the hospital and how it may have even looked at home. Just because, again, this is, to me, seeing things in a new way for so many people. Um, what birth can look like, how powerful women are, what their maternal capabilities are. I think we vastly underestimate women in general. And in the role of the midwife, what is that role? And is it possible for a baby to have a slower transition and be okay? And the answer is, we sit with each situation as it comes. It's not always so. There are some babies with slower transitions that of course will need help. This was not one of them. But this baby was and is 100% healthy. You can see, you know, just minutes after birth that he has fully transitioned. Um, so I think sometimes we learn by watching and we definitely learn by experiencing. And if we can, if we can have the presence and the patience to sit on our hands knowing that we can act at any time. It's not a matter of sitting on your hands just to see if you can. Sit on your hands and witness and be present to what's happening. And if you feel you need to get in there, then you trust that. But if you're connected, connected to yourself, your own grounded energy, as well as to the mom, connected to the soul of this baby, uh, you will have a better shot at allowing when there's time to allow and not using your fear to jump in and your experience because sometimes experience is such that it guides us in that direction. And I think many midwives have watched this and said, well, 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 that's not possible. Um, but yes, but yet it is. And yet it's clear that there are other ways of being and supporting women that are healthy and are beautiful. And it doesn't always have to be the routine we're taught. And we can't stick to routine only out of fear, because then we don't grow and we don't learn. So again, I thank these parents and this baby for once again, teaching me, teaching me to be the patient witness, because that is exactly what happened. So I'm going to play the video again, uh, for fun. So in many situations, hospital and probably at home, this part definitely would have been rushed. Um, maybe someone would be telling mom to push harder. And again, this false idea that this was a shoulder dystocia because the face didn't fully come out is false. Uh, we can't use a textbook for everything we see. So textbooks that teach, you know, a head that doesn't fully crown might have impacted shoulders. Sure, it might, baby might, but that was not the case here. So we're watching and we're assessing the baby and there is no need to get in there or to make her get in another position or to order her to push. And yeah, especially getting in there to release a shoulder that is not stuck. It's simply a matter of rotation and time. And why he came out to the top lip only? I have no idea. It's just the way he wanted to be born. I'm constantly balancing the real risk of intervening. I'm so grateful for you, Shai. We intervene when it's absolutely necessary. And we know in our hearts and our hands that this must happen. And I've certainly been in that situation where my hands know what to do and I don't feel apologetic. It is absolutely what needs to happen. But when I don't feel that way, I'm very aware of the trauma that can be inflicted when we take away a woman's power by not asking permission. At the very least, ask permission. Oh, Tell her, 
what you're going to do. And at best, just allow. Oh. Yep, here you go. And allow this baby to have his sacred timing. Oh. You got it. You got this. Encouraging her. This is sometimes the funniest oh little part gosh. to have a head out. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Lots of fluid. Okay. There you go. He's got yeah, the blood is normal. Somebody, somebody had comments about that. Blood is normal, uh, whether it's from up inside someone's body or it could also be their placenta releasing already. You never know, but not abnormal. Not something that I was worried about. Just part of birth, and a baby with blood on his face is just beautiful. So um, what would be happening right now in the hospital or in many home births would be vigorous stimulation. But again, she's providing stimulation. He's sort of uh, expelling. Vigorous stimulation, um, listening to heart rate, which again, I did assess and I did it very inconspicuously. Uh, in many situations, this baby already would have been taken from his mother and violently stimulated and stressed until he finally took a breath and violently suctioned right away. Checking heart rate. And he's coming into his body. I could hear, obviously, that he was really full of stuff. Um, so, again, this was the go-to, not with a bulb syringe. Although, that would have gotten the job done, but with an entirely different energy. Can you imagine how powerful this woman feels? She didn't necessarily know in those moments that anything weird was happening. Um, and then there really wasn't, but you know, uh, didn't necessarily know that every baby doesn't need this. It just seemed and felt completely organic for this baby. This was his entrance. You can see how calm the dad is. He's smiling. These parents know there's nothing wrong. They absolutely are there. So, right, baby would have probably had his cord cut, taken away, and been violently suctioned and rubbed and put on a table and assessed by, uh, you know, NICU neonatal people. But he's fine. That's absolutely um, the moment that he entered his body there and was able to make that sound, make those first cries with his mama's help. So again, this was um, an intuitive situation. I was ready to move to breaths, her giving him breaths, but his heart rate was fine. And he obviously at this point does not need breaths. He's screaming. So we're watching for the final stages of transition, which would include um, better tone, but it's coming. He's, you know, color looks great. And I think about how traumatic it could have been for this family to be in another setting. But of course, that's not what they called in. They called in a beautiful, empowering experience where somehow, uh, by the grace of God, they are also sharing their wisdom with the world, which I am just so humbled and honored by. This was an absolute blessing. And baby Shiloh has taught so many people just worldwide. So. So much gratitude again to Kendra and her family and to you for watching this and being willing to learn. If you're someone that 
is open to these ideas. This is how birth can look. This wasn't a fluke. This wasn't an accident. This is how 99% of births I attend look. Um, so holding the space for it, having the experience and the knowledge and working with these badass women. So thank you so much, Kendra and family. We absolutely adore you. You are officially done. Oh my goodness.